The UK's Department of Trade and Industry did a very interesting test a few years ago on eight solar panels which they put side by side on an airfield in Cranfield in the south of England. The objective was to do real comparative tests, not just to look at panels but whole systems, and they connected each panel up to a 150 litre hot water cylinder. At the end of the day they drew off the hot water, sometimes they also did it in little batches during the day as well, and they measured the energy that was actually delivered, delivered by the panel. So it was a system analysis, not just a panel analysis. The results were very interesting. These side-by-side -side tests also had some input measurement. They measured the electricity that went into the solar panels, the solar heating system, to actually run the pumps and solar controllers. Because seven out of the eight panels actually used electricity to run their pumps and controllers. Of those that did, the flat plates averaged a 17% carbon clawback, and the evacuated tubes 23%. With a rough figure of about 20%, this is equivalent to running a conventional solar panel for 10 years and having its benefit negated by two. There was one panel, Solar Twin, which didn't do that. It had a zero carbon clawback because its pumping system was photovoltaic. It wasn't plugged into the mains. This test vindicated the Solar Twin design as having a significantly better carbon footprint and having a, therefore a much more sustainable mode of operation. But Solar Twin's results were subject to quite severe criticism. One of the problems was that the Solar Twin was asked to um, move into the test at two weeks' notice because another supplier uh, pulled out at short notice. And we only make one size of panel, and it's 2.8 square metres. And it's designed to fit a 120 litre hot water cylinder because that is the size that we can retrofit to without changing it. And that's the size that most hot water cylinders are in the UK and Ireland. So what could we do? Should we make a panel 25% bigger? It wasn't feasible. We could have possibly done it, but it wouldn't have been something that we could have transported because it would have been too big. There's a maximum size to stick things in lorries, and if you go over that size, you then have to have a separate delivery, which puts the cost up from under £100 to about £400 a drop. No, we had the panels as big as we could make. So the options were withdraw because of short notice. No. Fit two panels, which we were allowed to do, but be accused of cheating. Or fit one standard panel and maybe rebase the results according to size. Again, we might be accused of, accused of cheating. So we did the lot. We fitted one panel and then looked at the figures. In terms of the actual energy output, ignoring the fact that it used energy to run it, it came bottom. But if you looked at the energy, the carbon budgets, it came more than halfway up, third and fourth, depending on exactly how the water was drawn off. There was um, an evening draw off and, uh, uh, and there were splodges during the day. Interestingly, our panel performed best if you pulled off water at several stages during the, during the day. It's quite reactive to um, water draw in the sense that it, it improves its efficiency. If we rebase the results to a 150 litre cylinder, um, our panel came second and third in these two different criteria in gross energy output. Gross, before you even took the carbon pull back off. And if we rebased it to the average area of flat plates, which was 15% bigger than ours, um, we came top in terms of carbon savings. These tests were a bit like a children's tea party, where everybody had to be given a sweetie. Everyone was a winner in one way or another, if you looked at the figures. There was another company which had the most efficient panel per square metre. There was another one that just delivered the most energy. It had a very big panel. And, um, but we were very, very pleased that the, the Solar Twin perspective of actually having invested in a zero-carbon system in terms of zero-carbon zero pumping was actually paying off and had substantial improvements. After all, if you want to run a panel for 10 years and you negate its benefits by two years by having mains power pumping and there's an alternative on the, on the market, what would you choose? We weren't popular with our competitors when we published this and we were fined by our trade association of £1,000 um, for naming the brands and their different performances. We withdrew them and um, we withdrew the names even though we didn't have to under law and the fine was withdrawn. The test site came into its use again when some competitors started claiming to the government that our system would boil in normal use. We knew it didn't. We had lots installed. So, but we still had to invest a lot of money in independent testing to show it. And here is the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is a panel that's installed in the south of England where it's sunny, in a heat wave, for several days without any water being drawn off. 
in a moderately small cylinder of 120 litres. And this test comes from the 24th of June 2005. You'll see at midnight of one day, the panel starts, the top of the cylinder, which is the yellow line, starts at just over 70 degrees, and it finishes the day exactly the same. In between, it falls during the night, rises during the day, and then falls in the afternoon again. And it's that fall in the afternoon which people didn't really believe. But Solar Twin is actually designed to export heat, to get rid of heat when it gets too hot. And you can see that beginning to happen when the blue and the yellow line, the blue line is the panel, and the yellow line is the top of the cylinder, cross over at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Another interesting thing you can see from this graph is the stratification that Solar Twin has, the difference in temperature. If you look at noon, for example, there's about a 20 degree difference between the top and the bottom of the cylinder. That's the, that's the yellow line and the grey line. But by the afternoon, the bottom of the cylinder is caught up in temperature and the top has cooled down. So solar twin doesn't boil in normal use. In the worst case, it didn't even reach, reach in the hottest case, best or worst, depending on your perspective, um, it didn't even reach 90 Celsius. Another interesting observation from this is the difference between the yellow and the blue lines um, when the system is heating up. It's only a few degrees, which shows that rubber panels, which is what solar twin is made of, have very little thermal resistance because the temperature of the panel and the temperature of the water are very similar. Thanks very much.